Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Oh wait, what? No, 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 stop. <laughs> Off to a great start. <laughs> anyway. This, this has been a long time coming. Yeah. So welcome. So welcome to my let's play of Octopath Traveler. I have to say, I've been waiting a really long time to say that. I, I have when I heard about this game, at um. For the Switch conference when it was first announced back in like 2017, I th I was a bit skeptical about hearing about it, but when I heard that it was being developed by Square Enix, my I was my fears were allayed because Square Enix I know they're known for their great RPGs, and Alex, if you've been watching our videos with him, he talks about this game like as if it's like you know as great as like you know like basically it's like made of gold. In like the second video I was in, I just like, I spent an entire 40 minutes just talking about Octopath. That was just the entire video. Last Promise was just the background. Yeah. <laughs> it was basically like a, like a, um, uh, it was basically like a podcast at that point. That was my life for like three months. Because I was playing incredibly slow at the game at the time. And probably still do, but uh, I know a few tips and tricks now. Alright. Because 100% of the game, like, everything is done. So, I have really wanted to try this game out, but I have no idea what this game is about. I am completely blind. The only thing, I've, I've only started up the game. This is my second time starting it out. The first time I listened to, like, this main thing, which is so good, for, like, 45 minutes. And I also tinkered with the settings. And I've also gotten my controller, my Xbox One controller, to actually, like, work with this. And before, I just want to like, turn down the volume. There we go. So that Are way, you kidding me? Turn that shit up. Uh, if I do that, then you're not going to be able to hear either, any of this. But just be on my it, It's a small price to play to pay for salvation. I mean, right. the tracks are very good. All right, I guess we'll turn like, Probably track. better than our commentary, to be completely fair. <laughs> okay, I'll turn I mean, it up today. I'm not, I'm, I'm not turning it up to max. As much as I love it, I'm not doing it. All right, that's that's respectable. And if I if we, and I'll change it in the next part, like if the if if we're like not low enough, I'll tinker with the settings because I don't know if they'll be able to hear us or not, depending on the uh, next part. So I'll tinker with the settings after this part. So yeah, you like, check the comments after this video is posted, or I'll just check the video itself. That's so, true. So yeah, my friend gifted me this game, and he was nice enough to give it to me because you know it. He, well, he gifted me his account that had Octopath Traveler on it, and I told him that I would only play Octopath Traveler, and he decided to give it to me as an early birthday present, so yeah, really nice. Kudos to that guy. Yeah. I mean, he really just, he's the hero of this story. Like seriously, if not for him, I don't think I would be playing this game for like another, probably not another like two months or so. Well, his gamer sense was tingling. Was tingling. It was like, listen, we gotta get this man to play right now. Yeah. And I mean, I would play it sooner or later, but I would probably be playing on the Switch and I wouldn't be able to record it. And you'd be playing it probably later, probably soon. Oh yeah, definitely. But dang I mean, to him, too late. I'm able to play it. Coming out and everything. And also just like, there's so many good games that are coming out, like relatively soon. Mm -hmm. Also, Sword and Shield is coming out. Um, yeah, I've heard about that game. I don't know if I'm going to get it. I honestly, I probably won't. The last Pokemon game I got was Omega Ruby. Yeah, same. And I, but it literally just felt, well, yeah, it was a remake of Ruby and Sapphire. But, but it was a good remake. No, it was a good remake. And, like, I'll happily play that again. Like, that was fun. Sun, Sun and Moon, oh my god, those cutscenes. I don't know how Zeb got through them, but somehow he managed to. Yeah. Oh my god. But anyway... I so many of those streams just because I was asleep. I know. Like, I, I, I was just like turning on my phone and basically just like, you know, do something else while I wait for the cutscenes to go through. That's fair. I'm following it now, though, so... Like, I'll get notifications every time we stream, so... Yeah. Got I, mean, that he, I mean, he tells me when he streams anyway, so I don't need to set the notifications on. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let us begin a new game. 
So, oh, okay. Choose a travel right. to begin your so, journey. So, I have... So pretty much what's happening right now is you're not really getting any context about these characters. You're not getting anything about these characters yet, except for the bare bones of what they do in their story. Okay. Uh, so you really just have to pick one of eight. It's kind of random. I can give you pointers about each one of them, All but right. the well, really let, let me read up about them. All right, so we have this guy named Cyrus. Path action, scrutinized, talent, study, flow. Okay. Your name is Cyrus, and you are a scholar. You teach at the Royal Academy in At Atlas Dam. And though you have numerous admirers, your only true passion is the pursuit of knowledge. There is so much more I would learn. One day you realize that an invaluable tone is managed from the Royal Library, piquing your insustainable curiosity. Alright, so what's your opinion on Cyrus? Um, honestly, he's a staple on most teams. Like, if you have him on your team, you've got, like, probably a good third of, like, all of combat, if not half of all of combat, just on lockdown. Like, okay. as you'll see, like, breaking and stuff is very important, and he uses magic, and he's probably the best magic user in the game. Okay. And he's just, he's just a lad in terms of personnel. <laughs> Okay. Alright, then we have... Oh, oh wait, I think you told me about this girl. I did. She's basic... You should probably read this, but... Right. Ophelia... Okay. Cla oh, Claire. Alright. Path action guide talent summon. Your name is Ophelia and you are a cleric. You hail from the snow-swept frostlands where you dutifully serve the order of collecting blood. You hail from the... basically an ice place. But you serve the order of... Alright. Listen. If, when you do a story, it makes sense, okay. okay? Under your adoptive father, the Archbishop, as your adoptive sister and best friend prepares to embark on a perilous pilgrimage, you stand at the other side. But unbeknownst to the both of you, events are about to take a tragic turn. Alright, so pretty much, when you start, like, a journey with one character, which is what you're about to do, you're starting it with only one character. Oh, so find oh. that if you start with Ophelia, you're starting with your healer. Oh. It's starting FE7, but with Sarah, except oh. like, but she's still like just the cleric. Like, it's not a great idea. She's good as a, she's an amazing support unit because she's one of the two only healers in the game out of the eight characters you get. But and starting out at her is not a good idea, like on your first playthrough? Yes, because you'll be facing relatively tough enemies, like, at the beginning. Enemies will probably be toughest for you at the beginning of the game. Well, yeah, obviously, because I won't be able to grind. Characters, Ophelia especially, because she really can't fend for herself that well. The enemies in her, like, area are tailored to kind of be like easier to deal with with her so that the game is playable for her but it's still a bit of a challenge and a bit of a grind so you and recommend you, i basically uh, play her like last if, the, if at least not second to last no i wouldn't say second to last just don't pick her first but honestly you can like play her whenever but okay. you know all right so let's see we have uh and it's hunter all right yeah that's as close as we go. Yeah. Disclaimer, I'm gonna pronounce a lot of names like probably wrong. Just so I'm sorry. Anyway. I'm pretty sure her name is pronounced Hanit. Hanit? Alright. Uh, I'll try, I could, I'll I'll try and say that. Take it with like half a shaker of salt or something. Okay. Path action provoke talent capture. Your name is Hanit and you are a hunter. One of the last descendants of an ancient clan that calls the deep forest home. Your power prowess with the bow is unmatched. Your master left home one year ago, summoned to hunt a dread beast, and you protected the village while awaiting its return. Then one day, the return of an old friend gives you cause for concern, and you strike out on a journey of your own. Okay, so she is pretty much the second best. She's probably the best physical attacker in some ways. Like, okay, her and one other character, which I fucking I love like the other character, so you'll probably like her. You'll know. But she's a very good physical attacker, um, and she's like a frontliner. Okay. Uh, she also has like skills that can really help with support, 
And she also, she's basically Pokemon, but the character, where you can capture, like, beasts. Um, so, like, some monsters. And then use some of their, like, special skills once in a while to, like, help fight them. Okay. I we don't use her that much because some of her stuff is based on chance. Oh, okay. I'm good of chance. Yeah. <laughs> but, as we've seen, but... I mean, she's definitely fun to use. Absolutely. Okay. And then, let me see. Oh, this way. All right. Therion, he's a thief. Okay. Path action, steal, talent, pick lock. Okay. That's very useful. Your Trust name me. is Therion, and you are a thief. While your past is a guarded secret, your exploits are known far and wide. Mere whispers of your extravagant heist strike fear into the hearts of the wealthy. Drifting into the cliff lands one day, you hear a rumor of great riches to be had. You set your sights on a mansion that is said to be impenetrable, only to find what you never expected. So Therion is... he's relatively frail, I guess, but <laughs> he's still a very, like, useful character because he can deep off the enemy, uh, and also he could just steal. Bosses tend to have pretty good stuff, but also just stealing outside of combat is incredibly useful and way better than just like normally buying stuff sometimes because you tend to get some pretty good stuff and you can do some cool things okay uh, he's good i wouldn't recommend always having him on your team but yeah he's a thief if you feel like um you're kind of like getting a little low in terms of money or like good items Go with him. Right. I mean, as long as he's leveled up decent, he's pretty good. Alright. Then we have Al Alston, right? Apothecary. Path action, inquire, talent, concoct. Your name is Alfin, and you are an apothecary. You treat the wounded and sick in a small village amid the babbling books of the riverlands. Stricken ill as a child, you were saved by a traveler who asked for nothing in return, inspiring you to follow in his footsteps. Though hesitant to leave the only home you've known, your best friend convinces you to follow your dream wherever it may lead you. Okay, so Alfin, he's the other healer in this game. Oh, okay. And very good in well, how his does, own. Well, how does he compare to Ophelia? Is he better or worse? He's better physical physical combat-wise. Um, he's way worse when it comes to magic. Basically, think of it like this. Ophelia can heal everyone a decent amount, but Alfin can like, almost guaranteed always fully heal someone, um, one at a time. Oh. But the thing is, that makes Alfin so great, is also, if you have these items called seeds, and some other stuff, like roots and stuff, he can make potions using concoct, and that can heal everybody, can boost their attack, defense, whatever, if you find the right ingredients and make the right recipes. It takes some trial and error, but he can be a very good healer, honestly. Okay. However, I wouldn't necessarily start with him either, because the first boss for him tends to be very tough, especially with only one character. Okay. So, I would recommend going to him, like, after you've gotten at least, like, one or two characters. Alright, and then we have, uh, Primrose Dancer. Okay, Path Action, Allure, Talent, Summon. Your name is Primrose, and you are a dancer. You ply your trade in the pleasure district of Sunshade, a town forever shrouded in darkness. In truth, you are the high-born daughter of the once proud house Alisard, and an, an identity you conceal from all. Three men bearing the mark of the crown, they took my father from me, but you will have your revenge. Okay. Alright, so this is arguably, this is what most people consider to be the best story and like the most well written out of the eight because some of them can be a bit bare bones and leave a few things like out because they have to write eight stories in yeah. one story so you know you gotta cut the corners but besides the point she's okay physical combat wise she's not the best but she's also not the worst um she has decent magic as well her real talent comes in buffing herself if you don't have anybody else or you just feel like buffing her up or other characters with her dances so you know she can buff 
pretty much anything. She can buff your attack, your defense, your speed, whatever. And she even has a skill later on that helps with grinding and makes it a lot easier if you get lucky. Okay, if you get lucky. Yeah. Okay. And then we have uh, Ulbrich, and he's a warrior, right? Path action is challenge, talent, bolster, defense. Your name is Ulbrich, and you are a warrior. Once a proud knight, you've lost both king and kingdom in a bloody coup. Today, you serve as a master at arms for a remote mountain village. To what end do I swing my blade? The question tortured you night after a relentless night. Then one day, you overhear a name from your past, giving you a new purpose. All right, so remember when I talked about that other physical attacker who yeah. also just so happens to be my favorite character? Yeah, this is him. This is definitely him. So all you really need to know about Ulbrich is that he's honorable, he's really fucking strong, and he is the best physical tank in the game. That's all you really need to know. All right. And also that he's probably one of the easier characters to start out with. So Since he started as a warrior? Well, yeah, and also just because he can handle himself really well, he can buff himself up using his own skills, he has area of attack skills, he has single target skills, he has just about anything you want, except magic. He can't do shit for magic. Okay. But in his story, you don't really need to worry too much about it. Alright. Yeah. And then we have Teresa Merchant. Pad action, purchase talent eye for money. Your name is Teresa and you are a merchant. You stock the shelves at your parents' shop in your sleepy seaside hometown that you often find yourself gazing out at the sea while longing for something more. What lies beyond?